Okay, so today I am going to show you the full process on how to book a virtual exam. I did do a previous video on how to book a virtual exam. I did the video the first day the virtual exams were available and Humber had a whole lot of technical issues. So we weren't actually able to finish the process. But since then I've had quite a few questions from people asking what's the other half. So my apologies for the delay, here it is. With these virtual exams, initially Humber was doing all exams were mandatory to be in person. So since the quarantine from March 15th, 2020, the, um, a lot of the exams got canceled. I have my experience from my course two exam. I'll post that somewhere around, maybe up top. And uh, you can see my experience, how I booked the exam, I think it was five times and finally got through, but in any event, um, the exams became virtual around April 20th, 21st, around there. So there are some changes <laughs> versus writing it in person. So I'm going to go over some tips for you now. And also make sure you follow me on Instagram because I po made a post with 10 things to know before you write a virtual exam. Make sure you go check that out. I'm going to go over a few highlights now just to keep you up to date. So in general, purchasing a virtual exam is a two-step process. They will explain it to you as you're going and I will show you in about three minutes. Also, um, when you do purchase the exam, you will get a welcome email from the company ProctorTrack. So Humber has hired ProctorTrack to facilitate all of the virtual exams. So you'll get an email from ProctorTrack with a user ID and a format for your password. So you have to go there and make an account on ProctorTrack. So there have been a multitude of technical issues with these virtual exams. You wanna do the most that you can to try and avoid these. My suggestion, the computer that you do the onboarding process, make sure that's the same computer that you do the exam on because some people have not been doing that and experiencing a lot of issues. Um, if for some reason you do need to change the computer last minute that you're gonna do the exam on, that's okay. You just need to make sure you go through that onboarding process again with that specific computer. I think onboarding, if everything goes right, it should only be like five, 10 minutes, but it's uh, the luck of a draw. <laughs> so the onboarding email you'll get from ProctorTrack, you'll get it probably about I would say uh, about a week after you actually purchase the exam from Humber. Um, so it's not something you get right away. Right away you'll get your receipt from Humber that you purchased the exam. And then you need to wait a couple days or a week, some people even two weeks before you get the email from ProctorTrack. It's really not a rush. As long as you have it at least a week before your actual exam date, then you'll be good. So now I'm gonna quickly just go over some of the highlights of the 10 things you wanna be aware of. I will maybe put the picture somewhere here. <laughs> if I can uh, be tech savvy enough somewhere. Yeah, here. Okay, so some of the things you wanna be aware of is one, it is supervised. So a lot of people have issues or stigma with having someone watching you while you're doing something. So you just have to mentally prepare yourself because I don't know anyone who's gotten around it. You don't actually see the person who's watching you. They will just be looking at you through the webcam on your computer or your laptop, as well as the camera on your phone. So be aware. So a few things you wanna make sure you bring to the exam is one, your phone, two, your phone charger, three, a phone stand, or a selfie stick that can stand up, or a set of books, <laughs> something that you can lean your phone against. It has to be able to see your full body as well as the computer screen in one shot. So my first, no, my second exam, I had it right here. And the, you just saw my face and the person was okay with that. But my third exam, the person was a lot more picky. And so I had to put it across the room so that it could get the right angle to see me and the computer in the same shot. So make sure you have something that you can lean your phone up against. And pro tip, your phone has to lean up against something while being charged while being plugged in. Water bottle with water. Um, I wanna think about other liquids. I, never, I don't know if they clarify, 
I think they did actually, yeah, water, only water. <laughs> but it has to be in a clear bottle with no lid. What else can you bring? You can bring photo ID. So when you're doing the proctor track, when you're doing the, e the email, the exam, you'll need to actually hold up your photo ID to the camera so they can verify your photo ID, verify your face, make sure it's the same person. Pro tip, when you're writing the, when you do the onboarding, make sure you look similar to how you're looking when you're writing the exam. Because when I did my onboarding, I just did it with my face, obviously, but I wasn't wearing my glasses. And then when I did my exam, the thing wasn't recognizing my face. And I'm like, what's happening? Is it the lighting or whatever? And I don't know, it just came to me. I'm like, is it my glasses? So then I put on my glasses during um, the onboarding during the exam and it went right away. So, and lastly, the phone. Okay, so on their website, they made this big thing about your phone will be locked when you're using the app. So it'll lock off phone, communi phone calls, text messages, notifications and things like that. So I thought, okay, I'm good. But during my second exam, doing a virtual one, I was getting phone calls, I was getting text messages, I was getting Facebook notifications. Ha, huh. another pro tip. <laughs> Before you write your virtual exam, do not go on posts on Facebook that you're writing your exam and wish me good luck or any tip, last minute tips, because during your exam, you're gonna be getting a lot of messages saying whatever and it's going to be distracting while you're actually in your exam so yeah but anyways your phone is not actually locked so the Pro proctor track app will take over your whole screen oh, this video is long the prop it will take over your whole screen but it won't actually lock out any communication so my third exam i thought okay this time i'm going to turn on my do not disturb and then I realized do not disturb only works when your phone is locked. So if your do not disturb is on, and this is for iPhones, and your phone is unlocked and open, the do not disturb is irrelevant and you'll still get phone calls and notifications. So I don't know what would be the best solution. If someone out there knows, let me know so I know and so I can share with you guys too. Okay, that's enough talking. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do the full process from A to Z. So first thing you're wanna, gonna wanna do is just sign into the learner, learning portal as you normally do. And then you're gonna click on course and exam registration at the top of the screen. You're gonna scroll down to whatever exam that you're taking and click on that exam to say register. And then here it'll give you a brief summary of the exam, the cost, which is $100 for all the exams and the time limit. And that for all of the exams, the minimum grade is 75%. So then you go ahead and select select the virtual option if you are doing a virtual exam if sometime in the future they go back to in person hallelujah and just pick whatever region you want that's applicable for you and you can book accordingly for that location so generally the generally the exams right now they're offered at 10 a.m 1 p.m and then 5 p.m i've heard a lot of stories about technical issues at the 10 a.m and the 5 p.m courses so I've done all of my virtual exams at 1 p.m. and haven't had any technical issues. So um, it's up to you, choose whatever time works for you. So right now at this time, this point, we're just selecting, we're really securing the date and seeing what date, what times are available. We're not selecting the actual time just yet. So once you are good and ready, hit that button that says purchase the exam for this date. And then there's that disclaimer that this purchasing the exam is a two-step process. So make sure you complete step two after you've purchased it. So now it'll bring you to your receipt page and I'll say you have 30 minutes, 29 minutes. Well, yeah, 30 minutes to complete the payment process. You, there's a little questionnaire there. You wanna make sure you read through that and click all of the boxes if they're applicable for you. And then you say continue to check out. And then here's the payment screen. So you're just gonna fill out that information. Yada, yada, yada. And voila, there you go. There's your receipt. Pro tip, <laughs> make sure you hold on to your receipt for tax time. This is an educational expense for your real estate business. So you wanna make sure you hold on to all of these receipts as expenses. Okay, so that's how you purchase the exam. Now we're gonna go on to step number two of actually booking the time slot. So you can see there now in my current courses, it's showing that exam number four is there. So for step number two, we wanna go over to my exams on the right hand side of the screen. 
And then you'll see there that the date is there for the exam. And so now this part is very important. You need to select the correct virtual option in order to proceed to the next. You're going to select the virtual prop to track exam option with the time bracket that you want to be in. And then you go ahead and hit next. Select the time slot that you want to be in. You're gonna hit next. And then what's really important is that this calendar should come up and the calendar should have a green box on the date that you already selected. So at this point, we can't change the date. We're just selecting the time. So as you can see, the 9 a.m. and this one is full. The 1 p.m. No, sorry, the 9 a.m. is available. The 1 p.m. is full, which as you know, that's my time. But uh, after that, there's also <laughs> 5 p.m. that's available. I'd rather write it at 10 a.m. than 5 p.m. The whole day will go by, I'll be tired, and then I need to write an exam. Not for me. And there you have it. This is how you book the full exam. Part one and part two. So that's it, folks. If your process is looking any different, but it works out for you, awesome. At this point, there's been a lot of hiccups along the road and a lot of changes and updates. Humber is doing their best to make sure everything is semi, is working to the best of their ability. I'll say that. So um, in general, if you're having any issues, give Humber a call. They're open Monday to Friday, I think from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So they have really good hours and uh, you can just speak with any live person. Just come with a positive attitude, <laughs> a positive mind frame that you hope everything's gonna go good, but even if something doesn't go good, just prepare yourself for it, just to help keep you calm, because you don't want to get too emotional or angry or upset before writing a three hour or two hour long exam. So just come to your senses, do your meditation, do your prayers, do whatever you gotta do to just be in the right mindset before going through this process, okay? I hope you're watching this video because you are ready to write your exam. I wanna wish you all the best, good luck, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But before you leave, just don't forget to like and subscribe the video. Thanks guys, have a great day.